Okay, this is chapter three. Section one details the relationships between the Earth and the Sun way out in space. Now, first we have to consider climate and weather on this planet. That's one of the first uh, relationships that we examine. So climate is a term for the weather patterns that an area experiences over a long period of time. When we think about uh, climate, we have to consider something over a long period of time. This summer, it was pretty cool. It wasn't super hot. It wasn't like on the hundreds every single day. It seemed like it was always in the 70s or 80s most of the time. But when we go back every summer for like a century, we see that usually during the summer it's pretty warm. That's the climate of our summer. It's warm and it took, we got that data by looking at several dozen summers. Weather, on the other hand, is the condition of the atmosphere in one place during a limited period of time. So for example, if I go outside and it's cloudy, we know that it's not always cloudy in Merrillville. It's just the weather condition at that particular time. When we look at it, we'll see that that, well, that actually changes. So it's a big difference between climate and weather. When we're talking about climate, we're talking about something that is really a long period of time, whereas weather is short. The way I like to remember it is this. Climate, weather. Climate, weather. Climate is really long, weather really short. So that's how I like to remember it. Another thing that affects the Earth's climate is the Earth's tilt and the rotation. So as you've probably noticed, while this has been sitting on my desk, all these videos, it's slightly tilted. This causes the Earth, different places on the Earth, depending on what year, what time of year it is, to get different amounts of sunlight. And that causes different temperatures. Simultaneously, the temperature of the Earth changes depending on which side of the Earth is facing the sun. The part that gets hit with the sun is warmer, the part that doesn't is cooler. Pretty obvious, right? Another thing that affects the climate is the Earth's revolution. Now when the Earth is spinning on its axis, that is the Earth's rotation. The revolution, the Earth's revolution, is the time it takes for the Earth to circle the sun, pretend I'm the sun, yeah, okay. An Earth revolution is the time it takes for the Earth to make a complete circle around the sun. The tilt of the Earth combined with its revolution is what causes the seasons. The final relationship we're gonna look at is what's called the greenhouse effect. Now, when the sunlight hits the Earth, most of the radiation, the heat kind of part of the, the sun's rays, bounces back into space. Some of it makes it through the air, but most of it gets sent back. The stuff that does make it through causes me to get sunburned, but it also causes the Earth to get warm. Now, the Earth traps the heat, keeping it from escaping back into space. This is known as the greenhouse effect. It's like, mm, I've got to hold on to that. It doesn't quite escape from the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is the most important gas in this process. It helps trap heat. But today, we see that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has gone up really fast. And that's causing the Earth to hold on to more of the gases in the atmosphere. And that's caused the Earth to warm. This is what's called global warming. You've probably heard of it. We're going to talk a lot more about it in class. So that's just a really brief introduction. Now section two discusses why climates are different in different places. It looks at the factors affecting climate. So for example, latitude, elevation, and climate. The low latitudes are the area between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. 
So basically the low latitudes are this area right along the equator. And they have warm to hot climates. The mid latitudes are on either side of the high latitudes. And the low latitudes, they're between 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north, and 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south. They generally have a mild or temperate climate that varies between cold winters and hot summers. And then finally, the high latitudes, which are right at the top of the Earth, are between 60 degrees north and 90 degrees north, and 60 degrees south and 90 degrees south. When either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, it receives nearly continuous light. Simultaneously during the winter, this part is tilted towards the sun, this one's tilted away from the sun, which causes nearly 24 hours of darkness. All of these factors affect the temperature in a particular place. Finally, elevation also changes the climate. The higher the elevation a place has, the cooler the air. The reason for that is because thinner air holds on to less heat. As you go up from the Earth's surface, there's less air there. That's why the farther you get out into space, eventually there's no more air to breathe. Another factor that affects climate is wind and ocean currents. So wind is, is caused when uh, warm air starts to rise off the surface of the Earth and cool air starts to sink. This causes kind of a, a, a swirling about, which we feel as wind. The air begins to circulate around the planet. Now, these wind patterns, although to us they often feel just, they just sort of happen, in general, they work in patterns. Global winds that blow fairly constantly are what we call prevailing winds. Prevailing winds are caused by temperature differences on the Earth's surface as tropical air from the equator moves north or south towards the poles and then the cold air at the poles moves towards the equator. If the Earth didn't spin, these wind patterns would go straight, straight between the two places. But since the Earth is always spinning, it causes uh, the wind to move in a diagonal direction. As the Earth rotates, the wind gets displaced slightly, causing um, it to travel in a diagonal direction. This is called the Coriolis effect. So just as the wind moves in patterns, cold and warm streams of water, known as currents, move through the oceans all the time. They're always moving all about the Earth. The ocean current affects the land that they pass by. So for example, the Gulf Stream is a warm current that goes past the east coast of the United States, and it keeps it slightly warmer. That's why it's nice to swim in that particular part of the ocean. Warm currents bring warmer temperatures and warmer water, whereas cooler currents bring cooler temperatures all year round. The wind and the ocean currents, depending on the temperature of those particular places, help to create precipitation. The book also talks about a phenomenon called El Nino. We'll talk about this in class. It's a periodic disruption of the ocean currents in the Pacific. the ocean currents kind of change suddenly, and the climate all over the world kind of changes suddenly. Scientists aren't totally sure why El Nino occurs. We're gonna look more closely at it in class. Finally, landforms also affect the climate of a particular place. Okay, so the climates of places at the same latitude can be very different. The climate of Chicago is way different than the climate of, say, Idaho. And that's because the natural features of a place are different. For example, um, ocean currents or large bodies of water like Lake Michigan change the experience of a particular place. So mountain ranges can cause a rain shadow effect, 
when the windward side of a mountain receives a lot of rain and the leeward side receives very little. So what happens is, all this wind is coming along, it's got all this moisture in it, it hits the mountain. Now the windward side of the mountain gets all of the rain. The wind just dumps all that precipitation right on that side of the mountain. Then it goes over the mountain and comes back down on the other side, but it doesn't have any more water that it can dump. And then this is what can cause a desert. All right, section three. These are the world climate regions. We're gonna talk a lot more about this in class, so I'm gonna go through it kind of fast. Don't freak out, we'll work more with it in class. So first, we have tropical climates. There are two types, tropical wet and tropical dry. Tropical wet climates are hot and wet throughout the year. It often rains every day in this type of climate and produces tropical rainforest vegetation. Tropical dry climates, on the other hand, have dry winters and wet summers and high temperatures year-round. Tropical dry vegetation forms tropical savannas. Next we have dry climates. The most obvious example of a dry climate are deserts. Deserts are dry areas that receive less than 10 inches of rain per year and have very little plant life. Often bordering deserts are what's called uh, a steppe. A steppe is a treeless grassland and they receive between 10 and 20 inches of rain per year, also very dry. Now mid-latitude climates have the most, um, the most glaring differences between different types of climates. For example, we have the west, the marine west coast climate. This is uh, caused by cool ocean winds and creates cool summers and cool damp winters. Whereas the Mediterranean climate, which surrounds the Mediterranean Sea, has a mild rainy winter and a hot sunny summer. Humid subtropical climates brings short, mild winters, high humidity, and frequent rain. Think about the south, the southern United States. Vegetation here are often prairies, which are inland uh, grasslands, and also forests. Finally, humid continental climates change depending on how far north or south you are and nearby landforms to a particular place. The farther north you go, the more cold and snowy the winters, and the shorter and milder the summers. So we are in a humid continental climate. We're not that far north, we're not that far south, so we have a fairly sunny uh, summer that's pretty warm, and we have a, a pretty cold winter, but it's not as cold as, say, like Alaska or something like that. Then we have high latitude climates. Subarctic climate regions have bitterly cold winter and a short, cool summer. There's only a thin layer of soil that thaws, and underneath that thawed soil is what's called a permafrost, which is a layer of permanently frozen earth. It never unfreezes. Then there are tundra climates, which are even farther north or south. They have a dark, bitter cold winters and very cool summers with very long days. Trees can't grow here because it's always permanently frozen. Their roots can't get through the permafrost. And then finally we have the ice cap regions, which are constantly covered with snow and ice right at the north and the south of the earth. The final type of climate region is called the highland climate. These have cooler temperatures depending on the elevation, which we've talked about several times already. The higher you go up, the fewer, the, the cooler it is, and the fewer plants that can survive. Thanks guys for watching. Take care.